This is the winter of 1995-96, and we have had a weather pattern change this year after a series of uh, drier than average years. Uh, this winter has been wetter than average again, and of course, uh, wetter than average winters are bound to come around every so often. And what's happened is that this has precipitated a huge uh, amount of uh, mudslides and debris torrents, uh, er soil erosion events, all up and down the west coast of Vancouver Island. And what we're finding is, is that this is a huge story uh, that uh, it hasn't yet been, been uh, told uh, to any great extent. And as we travel around the the forest areas, we're finding that uh, indeed there have been massive numbers of brand new mudslides and debris torrents uh, this particular winter, and that uh, a lot of them are related to road building and logging practices. The Klanawa River is uh, a major local uh, drainage uh, to the, the south of, of Bamfield, and uh, it once had a run of several thousand salmon at least, as far as the, the best inventories we have show. And uh, uh, we've been looking in particular at the West Fork of the Klanawa, which from uh, speaking to a local fishermen, uh, once had, uh, uh, as recently as four or five years ago, uh, uh, coho salmon uh, in, in the stream. But uh, there are none there now. And we went to, to look at why there should be and we found that uh, this last winter and in the previous few winters there have been a massive series of debris torrents moving hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of gravel and mud uh, and uh, organic matter and logging debris uh, down into the, the river and the, the riverbed is, is completely choked now with, with gravel and boulders uh, and all the, the pools that were there are filled in. Uh, we know from speaking to local fishermen that uh, there was a long series of pools down that river uh, and we've checked them now. They're all filled in with gravel so that the, the river looks to be completely uh, 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 unsuitable now for uh, salmon spawning. It seems to have been completely destroyed by the, uh, f for salmon uh, spawning by the, uh, the, the erosion of the last few years, particularly last year particularly like this last winter. We're seeing uh, very extensive ongoing uh, clear-cutting operations occurring in the, the Sarita River watershed. And from observing the Sarita River, we can we can see that it's, it's become what's called very flashy. Uh, when the rain starts, uh, the, the river comes up very quickly, and uh, uh, the river turns muddy very quickly. And we start to see uh, logs uh, and uh, uh, trees floating down the river uh, by the time it's been raining for 24 or 36 hours, which has occurred quite, fre quite frequently this winter. So. Uh, there's a lot of the, the banks of the river are being eroded uh, as the, 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 the flash floods get higher and higher. And as the stream bed itself is filled in with, with gravel being moved down the, the stream bed by the, uh, the flash floods that are roaring off the logged mountainsides. It, it all seems to be very illogical and irrational what's going on. There's uh, all kinds of evidence, all kinds of uh, scientific uh, uh, evidence and uh, expert uh, assessments which document that uh, clear cutting on steep slopes and building roads on steep slopes uh, are the direct cause of the massive mudslides which are uh, destroying the, the productivity of the forest by removing the soil and devastating the uh, vital salmon spawning habitat. Uh, we know that the, the, a lot of the erosion occurs in the back ends of the, the valleys where there are no uh, salmon, but that the, the material that is eroded by the, the clear cuts on those deep slopes ends up down in the, uh, the flats where the salmon spawn. So that there's a direct, a direct connection. This uh, question of the link between the forest practices uh, and the damage to, to salmon streams is, is uh, extremely 
volatile politically. And uh, from, from my experience in the past, uh, when uh, I was involved with the, uh, I was in the, the British Columbia Forest Service for many years and dealt with people from the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And uh, uh, I received their input on logging plans. And of course, all the logging plans that uh, happen on the coast are referred to Department of Fisheries and Oceans for comments. And in my experience, they would often uh, r raise warnings about uh, certain uh, logging blocks, certain road locations. Uh, but these were routinely ignored. Uh, and uh, uh, from, from personal communication with, with some of these people, they, they have told me that it's more than their job is worth to really raise a ruckus about the fact that their recommendations uh, are being ignored. Uh, so there is a climate of fear within the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans uh, from the, the people that are actually going out there and looking at the, the logging plans and making the assessments. Uh, and if they, need their, if they want to hang on to their jobs, they have to keep quiet about uh, what's really going on out there. And that's the honest truth. The only place that uh, runs are going to survive are in intact uh, valleys inside uh, parks because uh, there is no sign whatsoever that forest practices will be changing enough to protect uh, the, uh, the remaining runs of salmon that are still hanging on in the areas that are being logged. We have a new forest practices code coming into place, but uh, uh, my assessment of the new forest practices code is that it won't protect the salmon. It still allows clear cuts up to 40 hectares. It still allows uh, a, uh, a extremely rapid rate of clear cutting so that uh, uh, you can do 40 hectare patches and then come back within uh, 10, 20, 30 years at the most and, and clear cut the ad adjacent areas. And the impact of that will be to uh, slow down the, the damage to the, uh, the spawning habitat, but not, uh, not eliminate it. So uh, the prospects look pretty grim for much of the, uh, of the salmon fishery. And uh, um, at the rate we're going, there, there will be uh, very little a habitat for salmon to spawn in adequate, adequately, except in those valleys that are protected in parks. It's, it's a supreme mystery to me uh, that uh, these uh, uh, practices are allowed to continue because they're uh, obviously not in the best interests of uh, the community, of the of the province, of the of the nation in the long run. Uh, it's easy to demonstrate that the, the, the future implications of what we're doing uh, will have significant impacts on the, the job prospects and standard of living of the coming generations.